Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. Over the next couple of videos, we're going to cover some tools that can be used in digital signal processing that aren't specifically filtering. So in all of our previous videos, we've essentially been working towards creating filters to look for specific frequencies in a system or to remove specific frequencies from a system. So, over the next couple of videos, we're going to start exploring a couple of different tools that we can use. In today's video, we're going to cover correlation. So, what is correlation? Well, there's a couple of uses for correlation, and we're going to go over two of those today. Firstly, let's consider the example of a radar. Okay, so this radar here sends out a pulse. We know the shape of that pulse, and we know the duration of that pulse. So let's say that our radar pulse looks something like this. Okay, so what can we expect the return pulse to look like? Well, essentially, some of that signal will be returned, but not all of it. But it's likely that the pulse will share a similar shape to the pulse that was transmitted. However, due to less of the signal being received back than what was transmitted, it's likely that the intensity would be lower. Also, there would be a time delay in the system. So it would look something like this. So, correlation is a tool that we can use to look for a specific shape given a known output in the input sensor data. So how does our correlation work? Well, what we do is we take our output signal that we have a known shape for and then shifting it sample per sample until the values line up. From this, our output will look something as follows. So, when there's no overlap between the signals, for instance, when the output is here and the input sensor data is here, we'll have a value of zero as there's no overlap. And this will continue until we get to our point delta t. Now delta t simply defines the change in samples or sample time between when this sample was transmitted and when this sample here was received. When we get to delta t, there'll be a spike which will specify that there's higher correlation between the two signals at that time. The highest spike in our correlated output represents where our two signals line up the most. So this can also be used when you're looking for a signal of a specific frequency. Let's again say that we're a plane and we're flying through the sky and we're looking for a specific frequency that we know another plane will generate. Let's say that they're the enemy and we're trying to locate them. For now, let's ignore Doppler shift and everything like that and just assume that the frequency that this other plane's transmitting will be exactly the same. Say we know that it's 200 hertz. We know that in a 200 hertz signal, we're going to pass about the zero axis 400 times, twice, for every wave. So if we were going to apply correlation to this, we could generate our own output signal, assuming that it's a sine wave of 200 hertz, and then use correlation to shift this sine wave along our sensor data, which in this case would be a microphone. When the two signals line up, the zeros will meet and our value will be at a maximum. Due to that, we'll have a high spike in our output correlated data, implying that we've found the signal that indicates that the plane is there. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I know this video was a short introduction to how correlation works and in the next video we're going to go over some examples of how to do this by hand. Now hopefully you can see that correlation is not something that you'd want to do by hand ever. However, this shifting and testing and shifting and testing is something that computers are really good at. Iterative processes that can just be run very quickly and numerous times. As always, if you had any problems at all, feel free to let me know with a comment down below and I'll get back to you and I'll see you guys in the next one.